What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness Edition. Big shout out and thank you to Randy, Mary, and Subaru for providing this new Forester for today's video. Take a look at their website, links down below. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in Gazer Blue, has option package 22, and an MSRP at $38,300. Underneath the hood of the 2022 Forester Wilderness Edition, you're going to find a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter H4 boxer motor. This engine pumps out 182 horsepower with 176 pound-feet of torque and it's paired to a CVT transmission, sending the power to all four wheels. The curb weight is around 3,620 pounds and it runs on a 16.6 gallon fuel tank and you can expect 25 miles per gallon in the city with 28 out on the highway. The overall length is 182.7 inches with wheelbase at 107.9. Width is 72.2 and height is 68.9 inches. The Wilderness Edition is off-road capable and gives you an approach angle at 24 degrees with ground clearance at 9.2 inches and the departure angle is 25 degrees. And then now moving on to the exterior styling with the all new Forester Wilderness Edition. This is a very sporty looking crossover with a lot of off-road focused designs. We get a really nice set of LED headlights. You can see the daytime running light as well as a projector beam and the headlights themselves span around the front bumper. You can see all this satin black plastic trim for the entire front end and a really cool set of LED fog lights in the farthest corner. You can see how everything looks up front and we even get some silver plastic trim in the lower portion of this front bumper. You can see the air inlet to allow cooling to the radiators and then a nice grill with your Subaru logo right in the center. You can see all of the black plastic trim to really give it that off-road rugged design. Front end really does come together to give this a nice modern appearance. Moving towards the hood, we get a lot of really sharp lines fading their way all the way to the windshield and a nice satin black vinyl graphic right in the center to add to the theme. As you make your way around the front end, you can see how everything comes together. And then I like how you get that same plastic black trim for these wheel arches. They span all the way around these fenders to really protect the body. And then you can see how the entire lower side skirt is finished off in the same plastic material. We get Forrester in back finished in a really nice bronze orange color. It really comes together nicely. This car also features a set of satin black 17 inch wheels with a nice five spoke design and a rugged all terrain tire. We get the Subaru Wilderness badge up on the front portion of the door and you can see how we get black for the side mirrors. You get an integrated LED turn signal and then all body colored for the door handles. There's also more body color trim in the center portion of these doors and then all black trim around the windows. We get a set of black roof rails with more of that orangish bronze color underneath it and then you get a nice panoramic roof up top with a massive sunroof. The side profile has a pretty good design. You can see how proportional it is. It really does come together nicely. We get a lot of really sharp body lines all throughout the side profile to add to the aggressive design of the Forester. And then as we move our way to the rear end, I like how you get that same C shape within these tail lights that kind of matches the headlights. And then even more of that plastic black trim in the entire rear end. You get the Subaru badge right in the center then more black trim all around the rear glass. You can see the third brake light up top with an integrated spoiler, and then Forester Subaru Wilderness is all in the nice badge on the right. You even get blacked out font. We get the Subaru all-wheel drive logo on the left side. You get a lot of really cool contours all throughout the rear bumper along with reflectors, then your exhaust tip over on the right side. So there's a good look at the Subaru Forester Wilderness. This is a pretty rugged design for this crossover. It really does come together pretty nicely. We have Subaru's key fob, pretty much what you would expect. The Subaru logo is your unlock button. Going ahead and unlocking it, you can just grab the door handle also to lock or unlock it. But with that, we'll open it up and check out this interior. This interior spec is finished off in a really nice black leather and you're gonna see more of that orange accent all throughout. If we take a look at the door panel now, you can see some gray leather on the door. You get the wilderness tag, which is a pretty cool touch, along with some white color contrast stitching. You get armrest padding, as well as a nice grab handle all of your window controls, lock and unlock and mirror controls, and then your release handle up top. You get that same texture that we saw in the front bumper and all throughout the exterior, then a ton of storage space along with the Harman Kardon audio system. We do get power controls on the left side of the seat and you can see all the really nice materials. I love the vinyl in the center. It's very soft, has a nice texture as well. You can see how everything is laid out. 
nice bolster support as well, a little bit of orange stitching, and then some more of the gray stitching. Then up in the headrest, we get that same badge we saw on the side. Then spinning around, we get a black leather steering wheel with more of that color trim. And then now inside, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Everything will roar life. All the electronics will turn on as well. If we take a look at the gauge cluster, I really like how you get that same wilderness badge on the left with the tachometer and your speedometer's over on the right. We do get a small LCD screen right in the center that you can configure using the controls on the bottom side of the steering wheel. So if I just scroll left and right on here, you can see a few different things that will pop up all within the car. Then if we take a look at the actual steering wheel now, we get the Subaru badge right in the center, volume controls on the left as well as your track, info and source buttons, you have some Bluetooth connectivity, over on the right side, we have all the cruise control settings, steering intervention, as well as the distance pacing. Then we have two different drive modes right here for your SI drive, along with the normal mode. You can easily toggle between that. We do get a set of steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, which will be pretty interesting to drive, even though this is a CVT. And then on the left stock, you can see your turn signal stock, as well as some headlight controls. And then over on the right, we got all the windshield wiper controls. I also like the yellow stitching around the steering wheel. Taking a look on the left side now, we have some tailgate buttons as well as a few different safety settings along with the interior lighting. Then you can see all the trim leading its way to one of the air vents. We have some cool stitching along the dash. A lot of cool contours all within the dashboard. Then I like on the right side, we get more of that texture as well as the stitching. There's a screen up in the center that has some good climate information as well as a few more settings. If I go ahead and toggle the info button on the left side of the steering wheel, that's gonna control this screen. So if I just toggle that right now, you can see kind of a home menu. We can also go down to pitch and roll and some drivetrain information. We also get some temperatures that pop up, all of your information for climate and navigation, radio, and then a few more things for trip distance and things like that. So I like all the different information. And then also in that screen, if you toggle down here, this view button for the camera, it actually pops up with a shortcut to the camera. That's a really cool feature to see that in a secondary screen. And then underneath that, taking a look at the main screen now, in our home menu, you see all sorts of different things like your map, your phone, your apps. If we toggle into apps, you have a few things that'll come up, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You have a physical home button as well as the touchscreen one. All of your settings come up as well. You can adjust all sorts of different things, Wi-Fi hotspot, factory reset, different things like that. We can go under the vehicle and then adjust a few more items. If I go ahead and take the car and put it into reverse, the backup camera will pop up on this lower screen. You can see the guidelines, and I like how if I toggle that view button, you now have two different cameras. So that's pretty neat to see both of them pop up at the same time. And then underneath the screen, we have a few shortcuts for the actual screen, along with your volume on the left, the tuning over on the right, then a media icon down below that. Climate control settings are gonna be below the screen, you have your fan speed right in the center. You can easily adjust. When you make any sort of adjustments, everything comes up on this upper screen. So I like how you have the physical controls along with the screen to let you know what you're doing. You do get dual zone temperature. You have automatic AC. Your different modes will pop up. And of course, everything comes up on the screen as you make any adjustments. You have the max AC and sync. And then beneath that, we get a pretty good amount of storage space along with some USBs. Then you can see more of that cool color trim around the shift boot. Then down below, we have an electronic parking brake as well as the brake hold. And then in the center, we have your drive modes. If you toggle this left and right, it comes up with two different off-road settings. We have the snow and dirt mode, and then we have a deep mud and rut. So I like how everything is laid out. When you push it centered, it'll go down into the normal street driving modes. And then on the far right, we get your two different controls for heated seats. Really nice look with some more of the stitching. We get two cup holders and more storage. And then same color contrast stitching. If we open this up, we have a pretty decent amount of storage space in here and then some nice comfortable padding. If we take a look at the glove box now, pretty normal bucket as you would expect. And then one last look at the interior. I think Subaru did a pretty good job making this feel very sporty. I love all the color contrast, the nice wilderness badges all around. It really does make this feel like a little bit special compared to a normal Forester. Really easy the way everything is laid out. And then up top, we get two massive sun visors, a sunglass holder up here, and then all of your controls for the sunroof, as well as some lane keeping and some safety settings and dome lights. And then we also have our massive sunshade for the sunroof. It actually does go into the rear area. So it's a pretty large single piece. And then moving on to the rear seat space, if I grab the door handle and open it up, the door panel's finished off just like we saw up front with the same colors and everything. And then even the rear seats have the same design. You get all the same material, this can seat three people back here. 
we do get two separate storage areas in the backs of these seats. And then right in the center, we get some USB plugs as well as some climate vents. All right, so sitting now in the back seat of this Forester Wilderness, this is a pretty comfortable SUV to be in. So I'm five foot 11 sitting back here. I have plenty of headroom as well as legroom, maybe like an inch or two. And even with the driver's seat set at my height, I have some good legroom. Armrest is in a pretty good place and there's a lot of glass in here. It's really open and I love just how large that sunroof is. It's nice to see it for not being a full panoramic roof. It's nice to see it come into the second row. And then right in the center, you can even grab this down. We get a nice little armrest with two cup holders. And then I like how just everything is finished in here. We got dome lights up top along with your grab handles. And then moving on to the cargo area, you have the button on the interior, the one on the key fob, or of course there is one underneath the Subaru logo. You can just walk up, press the button, it's gonna automatically pop open. Then as you can see, we have quite a lot of storage space in here, very roomy. I mean, the Forester is a very usable crossover SUV, and I really like this durable padding you get, all part of the floor mat that's inside. We do get buttons on the left and right side. You can press these, and the seats will even fold down to get them nicely out of the way. And as you can see, we have a ton of storage space in this car. If we go ahead and enter through the door, they fold down nice and flat, and again, you have this nice rugged piece that's on top of them. But really good room in here. You have a removable cover if you need that extra space, but definitely a pretty practical crossover. All right, guys, we are setting off now in the Subaru Forester. The Wilderness obviously is a pretty sweet looking version of this car. I think it looks really nice and rugged. It's a good blend. If you want something that can hit a few minor trails, maybe like on a camping trip or something, it's a pretty stylish looking vehicle. So what is it like to drive now in this vehicle? Honestly, it's pretty smooth out on the road. There is a little bit of wind noise and road noise that you're gonna hear. I think just with the shape of it, the tires, things like that. You know, there's some body roll, some body sway. It's not a sporty vehicle at all. It's really designed to be able to hit some dirt trails and do things like that. So it's not the smoothest thing in the world out on the street. So let's go to the sport sharp mode. We'll kind of feel it out a little bit. It basically makes throttle response a lot sharper. Seems like the transmission's a little bit more aggressive, just giving it half throttle, it'll shift a little bit higher. It's actually pretty peppy for not having that much power, no turbo or anything like that. It can get up to speed, you know, it can get out of its own way at least. It's not a fast car or anything like that. There's no power to it, but it seems you know, nicely balanced for at least just getting up to some speed, getting decent gas mileage, and it can drive and just kind of do what you want it to do. Comfort wise, the suspension is really soft in this. Of course, it's designed to be able to hit the bumps, hit the trails, things like that. Therefore, it does have a really smooth and soft suspension. You don't feel any bumps or anything like that you have really good visibility too there's so much glass looking out the front you have such a good view around and really no blind spots looking over your left and right shoulder it is a really just open type of car to be in use of materials is pretty nice as well very easy to use everything and i love how you do have that front view camera you can even use it at speed so i can easily see what's going on you know if you are hitting a trail or something you can kind of see what's going on in front i can see these train tracks coming up just gives you a little bit better view for when you are taking this on the dirt. And if you go ahead and try a three point turn, maneuvering this isn't too bad either. The steering is nice and light. It just feels really easy to drive. And with the front view camera up, I love how you can keep that up even when you put it into reverse. So now I can have both cameras looking so I can see the rear, still see that front really good tight turning circle. For being an all-wheel drive car and being a decently sized crossover, the turning circle is really, really tight in this. So I think this is a car you can buy and you don't have to really worry about, you know, trying to maneuver it, things like that. It's just easy to maneuver, pinpoint, stuff like that. And the seats are really comfortable as well. You got all the good adjustments. So not too bad of a driving experience. It'd be nice to hit some dirt, see how it handles, but it seems like it would do pretty well given how comfortable and soft the suspension is. The ground clearance, obviously, you know, right now going over this intersection, this is a really large bump. It may not come off on camera, but this is not for a low car right here. <laughs> and it actually hit that really nicely. I've been in other trucks like that and uh, it's a very stiff bump. So this was really soft going over that type of hill. 
All right, so then flipping to my perspective, what is it actually like driving this, my personal opinions and things like that? It seems like a pretty nice, well-rounded uh, crossover that you're gonna be hitting some trails. Obviously, someone buying a Subaru, of course, and then the wilderness version, and you know they're gonna be going camping. They're gonna be going on some dirt trails off the pavement, going somewhere on some sort of adventure. Obviously, that's what this is geared towards. And I like how it's really usable. It's very spacious. There's a ton of space in here. Even at five foot 11, have this much headroom. I mean, you could probably be like six five, six six, and honestly fit nicely. You know, plenty of leg room, the steering wheel, tilts, telescopes, all that stuff. There is so much room. So I think a lot of people, different sizes can fit here comfortably. Back seats, not too bad either. And when you fold them down, so much space. So you can fit a lot. You have the roof rails, you know, you can fit a kayak or something on the roof of this. So it seems very versatile, very well-rounded. I like the suspension setup because when you are gonna be off-roading in it, it's gonna do what you need to do to not be rattling. It's not gonna be shaking all around. It's gonna be really comfortable hitting that type of terrain. On-road is all right. You know, it's a little on the slow side, obviously and uh, you know, fast turns and things like that. Not the best, not the most stable. It doesn't have that type of characteristic to it. So it's a car you're just gonna be driving normal. You know, you're not gonna be expecting to hit it really fast or do anything crazy in a vehicle like this. But other than that, you know, it still drives pretty normal, pretty peppy, you know, when you hit it a little bit. The transmission is interesting. For being a continuous variable transmission, that's what CVT stands for, there's no gears. So there's no first gear, second gear. So when you put it into the manual mode, they're just basically synthetic gears to where it's designed the transmission to go into certain spots to make these gear changes. And I like how they've done it because it actually does kind of feel like a normal transmission I wouldn't say it is the most normal transmission feeling type of CVT out there. You can still tell it certainly is one, but it's nice how you're able to hold those gears a little bit better than you would if it didn't have this type of option. So I think that's a pretty cool plus for a transmission like this. Coming to a stop, you know, it seems to do that pretty well. I think it's adequately uh, weighted and balanced and everything. It's just easy to drive. It really is. The steering's nice and light and with the visibility, it's just a really easy car to drive. So I think if you are looking for something that is a mini style of an SUV, but has the space, has the ground clearance, because that's what this car is really gonna be designed for, it seems like a pretty capable option, and it kind of gets the job done. So not a bad option for sure if you're looking for that. I think that is then it for this brand new 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness Edition. Definitely a pretty cool option for a smaller crossover SUV type of adventure vehicle. Definitely a pretty nice option, and it's laid out nicely on the interior to make it very simple to use with all the tech you're gonna need. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, and then check out Randy Mary and Subaru. Big shout out and thank you to them for providing this new car for today's video. Check out their website linked below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Baby, baby, baby.